Hey guys, Cody Schwabe here, and today I'm going to show you how I created a large flat painting called Weatherworn. Now, I'll be completely honest with you that I don't see myself as an expert or anything. I just like sharing what I've learned and kind of the process behind what I do. Um, and I think, and I'd also like to make another real quick point before I kind of get into how I made this painting is that I think a lot of people don't share their mistakes. They just share like the good stuff. Well, I'm going to show you, I show you kind of everything a lot of times, or I, I, I plan to in the future, because I think it's important to see that, you know, everybody makes mistakes. So you can't just expect to always make good stuff all the time. Okay. And abstract art, especially it's, you know, because it's, not as I guess meticulous it is easier to make pieces that you don't like um, so I just thought I'd kind of share that anyway um, so this is a piece I call weather worn I don't know if I'm gonna sell it yet I kind of don't know how I feel about it it's, it's hanging up in my garage drying um, but essentially I just thought I'd show you kind of how I make these paintings the process kind of behind it and what I think about it um, so obviously most of you probably already know that I use Dunn of Verge gloss enamel paint. Um, but this painting right here, I actually made with leftover house paint. Um, I mean, I made it with, okay, so let me back up the paint that you see me throwing on first, this orange and gray was actually leftover regular house paint, not even gloss enamel. Okay. So this is, that was just like a flat eggshell, house paint. So if you have house paint, you can definitely make this, these paintings. Um, and I don't know if you would want to sell it because of its regular type of paint. Um, really the reason I even created this painting was to actually use up a bunch of paint that I was almost out of. So I couldn't really use it for anything else. Um, and if I didn't use it, it was going to dry. So essentially you're going to see a lot of different colors being used and different consistencies. Okay. So I guess I can talk about that. Um, there's a very specific consistency that I've learned over the last year to use for my paintings. Uh, essentially that consistency is a four to one ratio. And what I mean by that is that it's a, you know, four parts water, one part, I mean, sorry, 4.4 parts paint, one part water. And so, you know, I'll use about a cup of paint and a quarter cup of water. Um, and the reason I do that is because, you know, my paintings have, I use very fluid paint. The paint's already kind of, it already kind of moves, but just using that little bit of water breaks it up. And you'll see kind of parts of these, like the, uh, the red here over on the bottom left, the orange and the yellow, um, the bright orange, not the initial orange that I used. It's all really watered down. It's actually more than four to one, and that's why it's so wet. Um, but again, the paint I already had, I was just trying to use it up, so that's why it was so wet. Um, now, the actual method for creating these paintings, because at first I used to think that I didn't want to share my methods with people. I was like, oh, I could charge them and all that. But really, to be honest with you, abstract art is something that pretty much anyone could make. Now, I'm not saying that there's not methods to it. I'm not saying that people shouldn't pay for it, but let's be honest. I mean, the type of stuff that I do, like even Gerhard Richter, if you've never heard of Gerhard Richter, look him up. I mean, he does scrape paintings and that's actually where I got the inspiration to do scrape paintings. Um, but, uh, he is, he's still living. He's one of the oldest living painters and most known and most like he makes so much money off of his paintings. But even he admitted that, you know, a lot of his paintings, like there's no reason for them to be worth so much money. Right. Um, so he's even admitted that. Um, but anyway, so kind of, he just talked about like, you know, the, the quality. So it's, it's more about the name of the artist than it is the quality or, you know, the technique of the piece. He's even admitted that. And he makes tons of money from, you know, paintings that are scraped. Just look up his work. It's amazing. I still love it. Um, and that's what inspired me. So sometimes it's not about the quality of it so much as far as, 
you know, what looks good. I mean, the Mona Lisa is great, but it's the it doesn't inspire me, right? Me personally. But seeing a Jackson Pollock or a Gerard Richter that has a lot of movement, but no actual focus to it. And I'm talking about Gerhard's later stuff. So if you know anything about him and you look up his, his stuff when he was younger, you know, he did a lot more realism. But anyway, um, so that's, that's pretty much it. So and yes, essentially anyone could make this. Um, you could watch this video, go out and buy some house paint and make your own scrape paintings. And you know what? It wouldn't bother me. At first, I used, to, I used to think, like, oh, maybe I could teach my methods and make a lot of money. And You know what? I'm not Bob Ross. Let's, let's get real. Um, I'm not out to make masterpieces. And I may never be famous for the type of paintings that I do. And I'm okay with that. I've kind of resolved that. That's okay. Um, now, the reason I make paintings and my goal, essentially, as an artist isn't to make masterpieces. It's just to make cool, colorful pieces that would complement people's lives. So essentially what I try to do now is make paintings that look cool, but have a specific kind of color scheme that, a, that is attractive to a, a large group of people. Okay, so essentially my business model kind of comes from that, and, and that's what I work at, okay? So yes, I do like to make paintings that are cool, um, or that I like, but I use certain colors or certain techniques and stuff like that for a certain reason. Um, now, coming back to this particular piece, uh, you'll notice that what I did was I, I kind of have my own method when it comes to this. Maybe there's other people that do this, but I, you know, for me, it's I call it the Schwabi method. It's my last name. Um, and what I essentially do is I kind of do a Pollock style painting to create the, to put the paint on the canvas. And then once the paint is on the canvas, then I will go back and scrape my design across that. And essentially I found that I'm very comfortable with that. I mean, I'm very, actually very happy with, with doing that method, uh, especially lately. Um, now that I've been doing more scrape paintings, when I first started painting, uh, it was a lot more of the Pollock stuff. And I kind of found this on accident because I was messing around with a piece of canvas, just kind of testing different consistencies of paint, actually. And, uh, and then I scraped it afterwards, and I thought it looked really cool. It was actually very, like, American colors, red, white, and blue. And I was very, I was very intrigued by that. Um, so I really invested in this Schwabian method and uh, started throwing more paint on and then scraping it afterwards and I was really happy with it. So essentially this is how I make a lot of my scrape paintings. Now, there is uh, other parts to it. There's other methods that I use and I apologize, you have to see my back a lot right here. <laughs> um, but anyway, so there's, there's a lot to it. It's not just as simple as that all the time, but that is part of it, yes. And uh, just a couple other quick things. One, yes, I'm painting on a driveway. So that's where I do a lot of my painting is in my driveway. There's a ton of paint all over my driveway. People hate it. The city hates it, but I don't live in an HOA. So there's not a whole lot they could do about it. Um, and essentially, oh, so let's talk about like this method right here. What I like to do is create distortion. So I love having the, the straight lines but for me, sometimes, uh, sometimes I'll keep it, but sometimes I, I just think it's too boring and I hate it. And uh, here there's too much, still too much red and orange in one spot for me. So that's why I don't stop here. Um, but the, essentially that's it. So kind of just going over like the method itself and, and kind of what your goal is as an artist Essentially, it all boils down to what you're looking to accomplish and what you're comfortable with. I like the scraped look. This is kind of like my comfort zone. Um, I do other ones. You know, I do have other methods. Um, you know, I have poured, poured paint and I do the Pollock style and I do a couple of other different things. But uh, this is by far my favorite. I don't know why. I think it's just the distortion that it creates. Um, but really, you can, 
if this is the kind of, you know, thing that you want to do, you really can. I mean, like I said, it's, uh, this isn't something that only specific people can do and no one else can do it. Um, I guess my point out of all this is just to show you my method, but also to inspire you that, you know, I've been getting a lot of comments saying that this isn't real art or this isn't good art or this isn't blah, 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 whatever. But it's not about that. I mean, yes, it's no Da Vinci. It's no, um, you know, it's no Mona Lisa, right? It's no Starry Night. It's no, it's nothing like that. But it doesn't matter. I mean, I'm not trying to make those things. And Jackson Pollock, I mean, even he was ridiculed when he first you know, started painting abstract, like people made fun of him. And then eventually he became, you know, the most famous abstract painter, or arguably, let's say. Um, and I, and like I said, look at Gerard Richter, who's kind of like my other, uh, I wouldn't say idol, but role model as far as painting. And, you know, he even said, he's like, people just buy it because it, I make it, you know, not because it's the most amazing thing you've ever seen. So, Anyway, uh, I'm about to wrap this video up because it's almost over and I was just kind of talking until it was done. Um, I do finish here with the straight lines. Um, I do like the distortion, but I didn't like it this time. And sometimes I just remake my paintings like seven times. Um, but hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, rate, share, subscribe. Leave a comment or a question. I'm going to let it go into the black real quick and keep talking. But um, essentially what I would like you to do is... Really, I would like you to comment if you found this video helpful. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them because I do answer questions uh, as much as possible. I also am going to try to do some more videos where I answer questions about the method or, you know, process or any, any, any questions related to painting or anything like that. I, you know, my goal is, you know, I thought about making a course, but I just can't justify it because I don't have enough practice or time in it and um but as much as i can help i guess if if it does i would love to and uh i mean that's pretty much it you can check out my other links my site and patreon if you're interested in you know helping me out per every month uh you can get into a drawing for for paintings uh but that's pretty much it i really just wanted to kind of show you how i make this and talk about the process and really just ultimately say like it's it's really about what you want to do and yes there has to be a market for it but you know don't paint just because you know don't paint a certain way because people bash it or whatever just paint the way that you feel comfortable with and really over time you'll kind of build that audience as people see you doing it more and more and more um they may not like a lot of the stuff you do but until they see a specific piece that strikes them so that's pretty much it. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you guys in another one.